Welcome to District Dialogues. I am Fulton County District 5 Commissioner Marvin Arrington Jr. The district encompasses parts of unincorporated Fulton County, Southwest Atlanta, East Point, East Atlanta, and small parts of Union City and College Park. Here on District Dialogues, we share snapshots of what is happening in District 5. So let's get straight to it. Our Wolf Creek Amphitheater Concert Series is in full swing until September. If you have not had a chance to enjoy a concert at Wolf Creek Amphitheater, you are missing out. Visit wolfcreekamphitheater.com. On August 2nd, we are proud to host our first annual Back to School Drive, It Takes a Village, at the Wolf Creek Amphitheater. We are requesting school supplies to help students in need. We are also awarding 10 $500 scholarships to college students who win Friends of Wolf Creek's essay competition. Also, our youth get to showcase their talent at the D5 Got Talent Contest. The event will culminate with our partner, Kiss 104.1, Movie Under the Stars, featuring Annie, starring Jamie Foxx. This event is free for all. For more information on any of these events, visit my website at FultonCommissionTheNumber5.com. It's time now for our Excellence in Education segment, where we spotlight individuals, schools, or organizations that are making stellar strides in the world of academia. Today, please meet Dana Jewell Harris, Executive Director of Next Steps Youth Entrepreneur Program. Welcome to the show, Dana. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> glad, to, glad you could make it. What is Next Steps and what are the folk or what is the focus uh, of Next Steps? Well, Next Steps is a youth entrepreneur program, and we focus on introducing kids to STEM, STEM careers through entrepreneurism. So it involves STEM education and science, technology, engineering, math, humanities, entrepreneurship, and uh, service learning. So we actually try to get kids hands-on um, introduction to hands-on STEM careers, meaning they do project-based skills, they do project management, we teach them business development through gardening, and they do a lot of community service work. Well, I know the STEM work is very important, uh, the science, technology, engineering, and math, mm -hmm. and I think you, there are a couple more pluses yes. that you added on there. What were the other two? It was two? humanities, um, youth entrepreneurship, and actually STEM administration. What a lot of people don't realize, everyone's jumping on the STEM bandwagon, which is excellent, but anytime a kid creates something, they automatically become an entrepreneur, and a lot of people miss the, the, the tie-in between administration and business management new business development with these things that they're creating in STEM. So we try to bridge that gap so that they understand not only the technical side of STEM, but they also un understand the business administration side. Okay, and how did you get kids to big up their thinking? <laughs> big up their thinking, absolutely. Um, the example I usually give is the garbage man. You know, and I'll ask the kids, do you think the garbage man's job is important? And of course they'll say yes. And I ask them, you know, why? And they'll usually start saying things like, because, you know, we create trash or we do this and we do that. But it is really designed to get them to start understanding what's the benefit of having him do his job and what are the consequences if he doesn't. And it, they start thinking about, you know, well, why do we have garbage men, you know? And it starts talking about the diseases that's prevented, the beautification of our neighborhoods, the safety, the rodent control, and it starts helping them understand there's a bigger picture to just this garbage man. But there's a quote that um, when I, I did, I was in the military for eight years, the Army, I did logistics. And when I first went in, you remember that show Private Benjamin? Yes, yes. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but I was, um, I tested really well on the ASVAB. And when I graduated high school back then, you know, black women, if we went into any kind of profession, we were either supposed to be a maid or 
or to uh, be a secretary. And I actually scored high enough to be an engineer, um, but it, it didn't work out that way. So they made me a, a secretary in the military, but it was with an engineering outfit. So the, the general there said, he taught me, he said, Dana, you know, those who know how will always have a job, but those who know why will always be their boss. And when you start tying how people, which is like a garbage man who has a job, to a, an, a STEM career, like an engineer that designs systems that these things work in, then you can help children understand there are bigger pictures besides the thing that you see right there. Well, thank you so much for being with us today, Dana. Mm -hmm. It's so glad to have you and to hear about the Next Step program. When we come back, our community kudos. Stay with us. Welcome back to District Dialogues. In our community kudos, we give recognition to organizations who are striving to empower our communities. Our next guest is Jean Hudley, Executive Director of Boys to Men Home and Sanctuary for You. Welcome, Jean. Hi, how are you? Doing great. Glad, so glad to have you today. Glad to be here. So what is Boys to Men and Home Sanctuary for You? And what made you decide to start this program? Well, I, I began by volunteering at juvenile court. I was a CASA for eight years, and I saw many holes in Child Protective Services, and I thought rather than criticize the system to do something to help it. So that's what fueled my interest in the area, and also the fact that I was a single parent, and I raised three children, two of which were boys, so I had a little experience. And a CASA is a court-appointed special advocate. That's right, for child abuse victims, exactly. Uh, what types of services does your organization provide? We teach life skills, anger management, conflict resolution, health and wellness, self-worth, self-esteem, etiquette, both table and cultural etiquette. We teach workforce development, work readiness. We help with employment and mentorship. And... Are there specific, I guess, groups that you target? And, and if so, why do you target those specific groups? I work, um, I work with males, of course, but most of the males that I work with are ex-offenders. And I do that because they have got to be given an opportunity to get it right or they re-offend. So as a part of that process, I also sit on the governor's task force for prisoner re-entry. And I sit on the task force with the Department of Juvenile Justice on their governance committee. And as a member of those teams, we are working collectively to try to find ways to reinvent the wheel, to not reinvent the wheel, you know, to develop programs that will be effective to get the kids back into society and on the right track. What are some of the issues of dealing with this special target group? Well... They need employment, you know, based upon their age. They need, um, some of them need mental health support. You know, they, they come from a lot of at-risk um, cultural environments that have been responsible for their behavior. So they need, um, they need people to stand with them as they walk through the process of getting in programs. Because many times we figure if we tell a kid, you know, go downtown to workforce development and um, enroll, and when they don't go, we assume that they're not interested. And that's really not the case. You know, many times they're insecure about going because they don't understand the process. They don't understand what we're asking them, and they're too ashamed to say that they don't understand. So it's always better if we assist them. We deal with expungement issues. You know, some of them have cases that need to be expunged, so we need money to pay for expungement. Right. Um, so there are, there are many boundaries, um, I mean, uh, many um, issues that they face trying to come back into the system. The other thing is, is that they go back to the same neighborhoods that they left. Right. So we have to find programs, develop programs that they, that they can go right to 
when they come out of detention centers or, or jail. And what is the ultimate goal of your program? My ultimate goal is to establish a residential program on 100 acres of land that will house uh, training centers, that will house um, homes where kids will stay in a family environment um, and teach them skills that will teach them how to be entrepreneurs. We're not interested in teaching them how to be employees. We want them to start their own businesses, and we'll set them up in those businesses. Well, you know, that's so important. People always talk about economic development and, and job opportunities, and there are a lot of low-entry jobs available, but you never really get the careers, and like you say, most people want to be entrepreneurs. Right, and then so many of our children think that they can't do it because they're not taught, and that's the only reason that they can't do it. And. How can we contact your information, your, your, your organization, for more information? You can reach us at 678-824-2636, or you could go to our website at boys, B-O-Y-S, the number two, menforlife.org. Well, we want to thank you for coming out today. Uh, is there anything else you want to share with us about Boys to Men or any special programs you have going on this summer? Yes, well, we, are, we just launched a mentorship program, which we're really excited about. Um, we launched it um, recently, and we are now looking for mentors and mentees. So if you know of anybody that's in need of the services or are willing to serve as a mentor, please refer them to us. Thank you so much, Jean, for coming out today. And thank you for all the work that you do through Boys to Men. We'll be right back. As many know, I am a strong proponent for the arts in all of its various forms. Today, I would like to welcome David and Alicia Robinson of Symphonia Youth Orchestra. Welcome, David and Alicia. Oh, thank you. So glad to have you here. What is the history behind the Symphonia Youth Orchestra? All right. We were founded as the William Grant Still Memorial Youth Orchestra, named after a famous black composer, the Dean of Black Composers. And uh, we formed this orchestra metro-wide in 1990. Um, Symphonia is a short symphony or a small chamber orchestra. Uh, Nia means purpose, that our, which means our purpose is to train students to play orchestral music, classical jazz, R&B, hip hop, gospel, Negro spirituals and such. And um, we encourage more orchestra students to venture into orchestral music. And we also play for audiences that normally don't get to see an orchestra concert. So how can a student uh, join Symphonia Youth Orchestra or learn more about it? Okay, we have a website, www.sinfonia.com, or they could call us at 404-328-0840. We offer instruction for children as young as seven years old. Uh, students need that musical training early in life. Is there a summer uh, program or course that you're teaching? Yes, uh, we've had recently had a summer program celebrating our 25th anniversary. Uh, it's a two-week summer camp. And then during the school year, we offer classes on Monday evenings and Saturday mornings. Okay, and uh, is this a traveling orchestra? Where, has, where have they traveled oh, to? We have traveled all over the United States, and we've been to uh, West Africa twice, to the countries of Ghana, Togo, and Benin. How many students do you have in the orchestra? I have to say between 20 and 25. Our numbers vary from year to year, but we're always looking for more to join. Awesome. And I hear that you have completed some music videos and collaborated with some national recording artists. Yes, we have. Um, Wale and Currency, we did a video with them. Uh, we've done something with the Mad Violin. It's called Battlefield. And we've also did something for a movie called Lifeless on a tune called Fly Away by John Jay. Okay, awesome, awesome. Well, is there anything else that you guys would like to share with us, Alicia, perhaps about Symphonia Youth Orchestra? Well, we are just so excited because we just finished celebrating our 25th anniversary year. And we were supported by the community at large and we look forward to 25 more glorious years. 
So how can students uh, join Symphonia Youth Orchestra, Alicia? Anyone interested in playing a violin, viola, cello, or bass can contact us at 404-328-0840 or they can visit us online at www.symphonia, that's S-I-N-F-O-N-I-A.com. And so there's only wind instruments, no brass instruments allowed? When we have enough students to register who would like to play the band instruments, we provide that, but primarily we offer string instruments. Okay, now I'm trying to learn how to play the bass, so can you teach me too? <laughs> of course. Um, we are an intergenerational orchestra, so we have alumni who come back and brush up on their skills and play with us, as well as adults, so we welcome you. Well, thank you so much. I, I will have to take you up on that. We look forward to it, <laughs> All right. and we hold you to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll be right back on District Dialogues. As we close out today's show, and as we reflect on the tragic events that took place in Charleston, South Carolina, I would like Pastor Belinda McCastle to share a word of inspiration and motivation. Pastor Castle, welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here today. And we always live as a people who have hope. And despite the latest events that has happened in South Carolina, we still have hope. Despite the travesty that has occurred, we thank God for the legislators and the meeting to consider bringing down the flags for consideration of moving forward to heal not only in that area, but to heal this entire nation. So we don't grieve as those who have no hope, for we will journey forward in such a time as this. Thank you, Pastor. As we conclude today's show, I'd like to invite you to stay connected with my office. You can reach my office anytime online, at the office, and also via social media, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Thanks for watching District Dialogues. We'll see you next time.